Next one, we've got a profit function. It's the same idea. Th this represents um, the number of tacos is X, and, and the P is, is how much money we're making from doing that. We want to make the most money possible. So it's that same theme coming back into again, uh, back into our problem again. The idea is that this is going to have a, a maximum value when the derivative is zero. I've got, if I were to graph this function, it's going to have this shape, right? And so I'm looking for this point right here where the derivative is zero. So a tangent line with a zero slope. Um, so what I want to figure out then is what is p prime of x? Well, here the derivative of negative one half x squared is going to be negative x. And then the derivative of 20x is just 20. And again, because of this here, what I'm interested in is when does this equal zero? What x value makes that equal to zero? So if I solve this for uh, x, I will get that x equals 20, and this is the number of tacos we're making. So I want to make 20 tacos, and... Uh, that, that's going to maximize profit. If you want to know what the profit was, you have your profit function here, right? So you would just find P of 20 would be negative 1 half times 20 squared plus 20 times 20. And so this piece here is going to be half of 400 is 200, and that's negative, plus 400 is uh, $200. So we're going to profit of 200 bucks if we sell 20 dollars. So let's look at some physics now. I've got um, uh, this problem is actually written incorrectly. This, the position of the ball, this should be off of 500, I typed 900 by accident here. Dropped off a 500 foot bridge. So that this matches, that, that should be the same value there. And uh, our first question here is that how many seconds until the, the ball hits the water under the bridge? Well, if this right here is giving me the height that the ball is up off of the water, then I'm looking for, you know, when the ball hits the water, this is where the height is zero. So the height is S of T is zero. And I know that S of t is negative 16 t squared plus 500. So if I solve this for t, um, I will get that t is the square root of 500 divided by 16. I'm only looking for the principal square root, the positive of this, because I'm talking about time. And so I'm not going to be going backwards in time, moving forward. So I just want the principal value there. And t comes out to be 5.59 seconds. Twenty-one says use derivatives to find the velocity function. Well, the key here is that velocity is the derivative of the position. And so I simply take the derivative of my position function that I have right here, and I've got negative 32t plus 0 in this case. So th this is my v of t. So that tells me the velocity at any time. Number 22 is just asking for, well, then what's the velocity after 1.81 seconds? Well, now I'm just looking for the velocity at 1.81 which is simply negative 32 times 1.81, which is negative 57.92. This, this one's asking, um, what is the velocity as the ball strikes the water? Well, right here, this is when 
the ball strikes the water. And right here, I've got a function that tells me the velocity at any time I want. So here's where the velocity comes from, here's the time. Just put it together for a happy marriage of answers to the question. So I'm looking for V of 5.59. This is in feet per second. This one as well shouldn't have left off. It's just out of room. I'll rewrite this one to show that it's a chain rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of the outside part negative sine x squared plus 2x, and then multiply by the derivative of this, this inside, of this part in here, 2x plus 2. So my end result is just negative 2x plus 2 sine x squared plus 2x.